What's up and welcome to Nighttime at the Nerd Bar, episode 108. Woo-woo! Dang. Still um, blows my mind every yes. time. Yes. We are bringing you a Tuesday energy. Normally we're a Monday night. Sometimes it changes up a little bit, so keep you on your toes. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be talking all kinds of cool stuff. We got uh, Delicious and Dungeon, so leveling a lot of really cool anime news. So much news. So stick around for all of that. We are live. If you're joining us live, join us over in the live chat. If you're watching later, no worries. Comment down below. And some introductions. Hello, I'm Carrie Lane. And I'm Katie Cullen. And I'm just going to show off my shirt while we're here. Because I realize you can't read it under the lower third. Nice. <laughs> so we're going full D&D tonight with Please Don't Damage Me, I'm Squishy. Nice. Your girl plays a lot of support classes. That's fine. I was like... I'm just moving my hoodie over. I'm all, no, mine's just New Orleans, but I like that one though, anyway, too. <laughs> what are we wearing? Cute yeah. stuff. We're just wearing cute stuff. We, we bring you all the cute on this show, and uh, <laughs> there was, yeah. <laughs> we don't just have a segue. Around. Let's just go into the news. I thought, nope, we'll get right into it. All right. Kicking us off right away. Um, speaking of cute, because you said it was an animal. Um, Japanese band King Yu, it's a G U G N U. Uh, their tour finale is live streaming. So, you know, if you can't watch somebody live because they're in another country or something like that, this is a great way to check it out. Uh, so Sony Music Solutions released uh, how, uh, there we go, Stage Crowd is the streaming service, which I'm like, ooh, interesting. And their tour, King New Dome Tour, the greatest unknown tour finale in Supre- Sapporo Dome. Uh, and it's going to be live streaming 20 countries and looking at the date. There we go. Uh, coming up. So the 23rd and you can find out more information. If you go to, we are going to link this over on our Twitter. Cause I was like, these are a lot of long URL. Words. There yeah. we go. Go check yeah. us out over at NTATNV, and that's where we'll have photos for different things or links. Cause yes, I just started to look at that. I'm like, that's, that's a lot of, a lot of things on that but um you can also just i'd say look it up um if you look up king new and so that's g n u and check out their final tour streaming so woohoo can we just talk about how what what was the tour name again because it was something it was like the great unknown or something it says the greatest okay it goes caught we got king new dome tour Brackets, the greatest unknown tour final in Sapporo Dome. Okay, the greatest unknown is such a great tour name, though. Yeah, it just really is. I just wanted to. You gotta keep it exciting. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah. Speaking of keeping it exciting, we have more news from Ablaze. You'll remember that I talked about Gannibal a couple of weeks ago and how much that just. uh, hit me in the heart and has stayed there. And I'm still thinking about it. We have new releases from a blaze socially conscious manhwa. The all is going to debut it. Yeah. The series launches digitally and in print on May 11th and is a recipient of the Korean cartoon of today prize. Uh, and the summary is the all is a story of ordinary folks struggling to be treated as humans in the face of corporate greed and reprehensible actions. A bond of respect has formed between young executive Yi Suin and union activist Gu, Gu Gosin. Seeing what his employers are capable of, Yi joins Gu in trying to establish a union for the company's employees. But despite the unacceptable working conditions, the workers are reluctant to go through with it until they witness a shocking situation involving one of their fellow employees. So if you want more real life situations, more socially conscious things, it's Hmm. a moving and socially conscious series about the struggles of workers at an oppressive Korean big box superstore as they strive for better lives and working conditions. So... That is coming out on May 11th. Keep an eye out for that. If that is your jam, even just looking at the page that they have available for us in this press email, it looks good. So keep an eye out for the all, A-W-L, from Ablaze. Nice. Yes. And from High Dive, they have Whisper Me a Love Song anime adaptation is headed to High Dive as part of the spring 2024 lineup. 
Also, the North American premiere is going to have a screening set for March 29th at Anime Boston. So if you're in Boston and going to Anime Boston, you get to see the premiere. Yeah. And uh, it is a romance series, and it's going to debut in April, so we're almost there. Uh, exclusive simulcast during spring season. And see if there's anything else specific. But yeah, again, March 29th, Anime Boston is getting the premiere. And yeah, follow High Dive on social media for more information. But it, the title again is Whisper Me a Love Song. And it just looks so pretty. It looks like a, one of those musical animes too, because someone's they're playing guitar in the picture. So again, follow over on yeah, NT, ATNV and <laughs> we'll have a picture of it. And it sounds like High Dive is doing quite a few premieres at Anime Boston. I believe mm -hmm. we covered mm -hmm. one of those, I think last week. That's so yeah. Fun. If you're going to Anime Boston, keep an eye out on High Dive socials and get all mm -hmm. of the dates. Speaking of all of the dates and excellent anime, from G Kids, Hayao Miyazaki's Academy Award winning The Boy and the Heron returns to theaters nationwide on March 22nd. So that is coming up. Screenings to include exclusive new bonus content with Golden Globe nominated composer Joe Hisashi and supervising animator Takeshi Honda. So hmm. that is coming down. I think that's what is that, Friday? The 22nd? Is that what? I think so. I know, I'm doing right? math I'm like, in public. Yes, and, Friday. Yeah, I'm doing math in public, and that's the problem. Yeah, screenings will include exclusive bonus content featuring an introduction from the film's composer, Joe Hisashi, who received a Golden Globe nod for his work on the film, and a recorded drawing session with supervising animator Takeshi Honda, who was honored at this year's Annie Awards with a win for Best Character Animation. These screenings will be in both the original Japanese language as well as the English language version, which features the voices of Christian De Speaking, speaking tonight, Christian Bale, Dave Bautista, Gemma Chan, Willem Dafoe, Karen Fukuhara, Mark Hamill, Robert Pattinson, and Florence Pugh. Robert Pattinson just chews the scenery in this movie in the absolute best way. I The screening I saw was the dub, and the dub is phenomenal. Like, it's just amazing. So definitely keep an eye out for these. Again, these screenings hit this Friday. And as we always say, it's always better to see anime in a theater with a crowd, with other people who are fully into it and fully invested. Um, I still mask when I go to a theater, when I go out in public at all. So if you are comfortable doing that and you missed your chance to see the boy and the hair in the first time around, definitely catch it this time around. It is a wild ride. Nice. Uh, looking over at the chat, uh, we got Geek Very says, howdy from a galaxy far, far away. Hello, howdy. Uh, I realize I have our other banner. Boom. But it, they both work, so. It works. It works. It's fine. <laughs> yes. All right. Continue on things we're excited about. Mm -hmm. uh, G Kids lands the film catalog of renowned Oscar-nominated director Mamoru Hosoda. And they will haul, um, becomes home to all of Hosoda's Studio Chizu titles. So that is going to include The Girl Who Left Through Time, Summer Wars, Wolf Children, The Boy and the Beast. So that is very exciting because those are some incredible films if you have not seen them yet. And just see if there's any other dates on here. Do, do, do. Oh, for more information, you can check out www.hosoda collection. And Hosoda is H O S O D A. And also, um, G Kids, one of their earliest theatrical releases was Summer Wars. So I'm like, oh, that's fun. Like, nice full circle for them. Uh, but yeah, go check that out. That'll be very exciting because uh, those are, ooh. And titles join the Academy Award and Gold Glow nominated uh, Mirai Be and Belle that are also part of the G Kids catalog. And Belle is stunning. That's one of the most recent ones I remember seeing. I'm like, oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's, uh, Makes you cry in a good way, or at least I did, yeah. but it's just because also it's just really beautiful movie and excellent collection. Go check that out. And if oh, you yeah. haven't seen those and if you have, it's nice. for Maybe it's time for a rewatch. Yeah. The soda movies go right for the heart. Yes. Like wolf children. Jeff. Ugh. Still think about that. So, yeah, good, good stuff. Speaking of good, good stuff. 
We have the Crunchyroll Spring 2024 lineup Woo-hoo! now because we have so much news tonight. I will not be going through the full list. The list is extensive. 40 plus new returning Oof. and continuing series on Crunchyroll. So we're not going through all of them. We are going through the highlights as pulled out by Crunchyroll because we have some fantastic shows here. Kaiju number eight. Black Butler Public School Arc, Konosuba, God's Blessing on This Wonderful World, Mushoka Tensei, Jobless Reincarnation, which I believe that's going to be season three for Mushoka Tensei, Viral Hit, Windbreaker, A Condition Called Love, and so many more. Kaiju number eight, which I remember being at the Crunchyroll panel in, uh, I think it was one of the Crunchyroll panels at Anime Expo last year. And the questions were just, when's Kaiju number eight dropping? Do we have a trailer? Do we have any information? This is one of the ones where people have been looking forward to it. And now we have a date. Kaiju number eight premieres on April 13th. As does the newest Black Butler arc, the public school arc. Returning nearly 10 years after the original run, this arc is back. So that is also April 13th. And slightly earlier, if you are a Konosuba fan, Konosuba returns for season three on April 10th. And those are just, that's just three of the big ones, guys. So keep an eye out on Crun- for Crunchyroll. Keep an eye on Crunchyroll socials for more dates. Keep an eye on the app for when things start to become listed. And yeah, 40 plus shows for the spring lineup. Dang. Let's go. Yeah. Dang! Plenty to watch. All right. So many shows. And then to keep you looking cool while watching your shows, we have some fun transitions on this show in case you're new here. (laughs) Um, Some of them are great. Some of them are like, let's just do it. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got it. So uh, Crunchyroll stores, uh, they they scored a slam dunk with the latest My Hero Academia and NBA fashion collab. These look really cool. So there's shirts, hoodie, and a jacket. And they are themed to, I was like, there we go. Oh, Miami Heat. Oh, I, I need to look, I need to make this picture bigger. Uh, <laughs> I was like, there we go. Uh, the Boston Celtics and Los Angeles Lakers with some all my goodness on that. And so the latest brand and fashion collaboration between All Stars, My Hero Academia, Toho Animation, and Crunch, Crunchroll, and NBA Lab, and Hyperfly. There we go. It's like few companies involved launching the at the Crunchyroll store. It's a mashup anime phenomenon, uh, as we all know. My Hero Academia is huge oh, yeah. and NBA, uh, so it's officially licensed. And do, 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 do. oh, it, it includes twelve NBA teams, and so kind of like a streetwear vibe. And there's also T-shirts, hoodies, and yeah, the satin jacket. Is, so it looks like it looks nice. Oh and yeah, those always are. Uh, then you'll be ready just in time for NBA playoffs in April. So you go oh, check dang. them out on the Crunchyroll store. Uh, oh, yeah. So here's some of the other teams. Los Angeles Lakers, Golden State Warriors, Chicago Bulls, Boston Celtics, Philadelphia 76ers, New York Knicks, Miami Heat, Dallas Mavericks, Portland Trailblazers, Houston Rockets, Sacramento Kings, and Toronto Raptors. So hopefully one of those teams is your favorite. And then you get a paired up My Hero Academia. So I'm like, that's a cool collab and it's nice because it sees huge titles and you know it's official and it's not a knockoff so yeah check those out yes speaking of more fun things to bring home courtesy of crunchy roll we are looking at the spring and our june dvd releases starting with buddy daddies and additionally i got a cheat skill in another world and became unrivaled in the real world too and my personal favorite Campfire cooking in another world with my absurd skill. I've talked about this before. It's such a good show. So Buddy Daddies is dropping on June 11th. We've got the Blu-ray set. It includes episode 8.5, which is also going, which sounds like it'll be another recap episode. I love that Mm -hmm. they're calling it Cherry Pick. Trailers, Uh character promo videos, other promo videos, commercials, and text list opening and ending songs. For those of you who are making, I think they call them fan cams now on TikTok. When I was making them, they were calling them (laughs) AMVs. But yeah, the text list opening and ending is always just... That's where so much of the budget is, and it's so nice to work with the with that footage without the um, text on it. So, 
We have Buddy Daddies on June 11th. We have Campfire Cooking on June 4th, which I will definitely be keeping an eye out for. Uh, we have I Got a Cheat Skill in Another World and The Aristocrats Otherworldly Adventure, also on both on June 25th. Of course, all titles are listed on the Crunchyroll store. And uh, depending on your gift-giving holiday, someone's birthday, a mother or father's day, etc., uh, if these are a little too late for your gift giving holiday, you can always order them when they come out and then print out a picture and give it to the person and say, this is what's coming for you, but not for like two months or however long. So again, there are ways to do this, even if the release dates don't mm -hmm. line up with uh, your gift giving reality. Regardless, those are our June releases. I am absolutely buying a cooking skill. Oh my God. <laughs> again, watch the show. <laughs> So good. We've also talked about quite a few times how important physical media is because mm -hmm. you are not guaranteed streaming media. So, or yeah. digital copies of things, which we've also talked about on this show. Uh, but yes, physical you are, media is extremely yes. important. Do if you like the it, thing. You want it, you should get it. Yes. All right. And then uh, speaking of more things to watch and check out, Tower of God second season voice cast and new key art has been revealed. And this will be, so tune in to the adaptation of the popular webtoon in July, 2024. I'm kind of speculating. I'm like, I wonder if they're going to do some kind of anime expo collab, pro, like premiere if they say July. Maybe. So maybe. Not officially said. Uh, yeah. So there's some new visuals, and we will post those over on our Twitter. And looking at this is the Japanese voice cast. I was like, wait, yeah. I was, I was like, mm, yes. Yeah. Uh, but we got Yuma Uchida, who is voice on Jujutsu Kaisen, Blue Lock, Delicious Party Pre Cure, and do 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 looking um, Taichi Ichikawa will be returning as the voice of last season's protagonist. And, and where is it? Uh, joining, uh, so new, new, new voice joining is Sayumi Watabe. And they are in After the Rain, Major Second, Build, Divide, and uh, Yeon Yiwa. And major apologies if we mispronounce anything. We're doing uh, our best. And, Yes, and more information to come. So just stay tuned to Crunchyroll for more information for Tower of God Season 2. Yes. So, all right. And to bookend our Crunchyroll announcements, we started our Crunchyroll announcements with the premieres for the spring season. We are bookending with the finales for the winter season. So for those of you who have been watching our winter, our winter, 24, winter 2024 anime, or for those of you who are like, you know, this has been on my to-do list for a while. I kind of need to catch up. Or for those who simply want to wait for the whole thing to be available before watching, which is a legitimate strategy if you're able to stay spoiler free. Crunchyroll was kind enough to send us a list of upcoming finales for this weekend, starting with Freerun Beyond Journey's End on March 22nd, A Sign of Affection and Apothecary Diaries on March 23rd, Seventh Time Loop, the villainess enjoys a carefree life married to her worst enemy and Mr. Villain's Day Off, which is just a fantastic pair of titles, honestly, on mm -hmm. Sunday the 24th. And the finale for Hokkaido Girls Are Super Adorable is on Monday the 25th. So for those of you who were, you know, had those on your to-do list or wanted to wait for the whole season to drop before watching it, keep those dates in mind. Those are the finale dates for this upcoming weekend. All right. Yeah. Uh, looking at the chat, Giga Derek also added, I recently started campfire cooking. Best superpower. I know, right? Your superpower is basically unlimited bag of holding. <laughs> like, my dude. Very like, useful. Unlimited bag of holding and ability to order anything from a Japanese grocery store. Oh my God. I was going to say, speaking of special skills. Yes. Hey, there we hey. go. Uh, let's dive into <laughs> solo leveling. We're talking about the most recent episode and only this episode. So if you know anything that happens after this, shush. And uh, let's get into yeah. it. Cause... Throwing this out there for oh. this and for Dungeon Meshi. Because yeah. we, we can't read the manhwa or the manga for either. 
if you followed when we were on the other network, uh, when we were doing Attack on Titan, my roommate and I and a couple of other hosts, hmm. my roommate and I had read multiple volumes of Attack on Titan at that point because we had a neighbor who had it and we borrowed it from them. So covering season two, we weren't able to do any predictions. We weren't able to do any theories and we couldn't get too far ahead because we already knew. And while it was still very fun to cover the season, it's not quite as good, especially on the crafting a corkboard <laughs> side of things. So we are anime onlys because of this show, because we want to provide fun content for you guys, and because we don't want to inadvertently spoil each other or anyone in the audience who is also an anime only. So, you know, keep the chat clear, keep the comments clear. And those of you who have read the manga or manhwa can sit there and go. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you can just laugh we... at us and our predictions. That's exactly. Fine. That's then the fun part. More entertaining for you. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, well, speaking of our predictions kind of coming true, though, we uh, get. A... I'm so mad. <laughs> Wait, why are you mad? The bait and switch cold open for this. I am so mad. Because we ended last episode with, all right, we're going to have a nice little conversation. And then seeing that the next episode is called, what is this, a picnic? It's like, we're going to go on a date. They're going to go out to dinner. It's going to be so cute. And then this episode starts with, I'm retiring as a hunter. I don't think I have the constitution for it. Here's the thing back. And I'm going to go live with my parents, despite the fact that my mom just negs me to my face. No! 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 So mad! I don't think this is the last we're seeing of Juhi in this story, but I am beyond mad that this is the, the character beat that we're going with. I get it, it. I understand. Your last three dungeons were the weird double dungeon where a break. whole bunch yeah. of people died, and then a dungeon break, and then you ran into a government-funded serial killer. So, like... I get that maybe you don't want the camera on you anymore. That I, I understand that. I would not be doing super well either. But because we have the context of her mom going, honey, I don't think you can do it. Honey, I think you should give up and come home. Like, mm -hmm. so I'm frustrated. Don't think this is the last we'll see. It's the last we'll see of her this season, probably. But I don't think it's the last we'll see of her this series. Yeah. But I'm going to miss her. I agree. I was a little bit like, oh, wait. It was so rude. It was so rude. The setup and from the last episode. Really and they tried to, like, one. so rude. You know, go wait, maybe, because he's all, yeah, that's probably a good idea. I need to focus on this, anyways. Like, there was no. Um, no attempt. No, it's done. But, but that's probably. None. None. We're the best, I guess, for them. None. Uh, was it? Um, Frustrating yeah. as hell. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, our golden retriever boy. Uh, you, uh, I was gonna say, yeah, you, Jean Hu. Jean That's right. Um, I love that he has the arrangement. Of like, cool. I'm gonna just, you know, do some mining while you do the stuff Murder. you do. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, you do you, and I'm gonna do this, and we're just gonna hire other people, and they're gonna hang out, which yeah. I think would be the bestest job ever. I'd be like, you just want yeah. to be the sit here and you'll pay me for it it's like okay. you just want me to roll up park it outside of here for a couple of hours i can entertain myself i can shove some books in my bag we'll be good it's just yep i mean it's it's absolutely a very suspicious sort of job especially when sure. the contract is essentially an nda, an NDA. Yeah, as I mean. well <laughs> it's just like oh oh but also the fact that he focused on, like, there was a very obvious alcoholic in the group. There yep. was a kid. There was a guy with a broken leg or some sort of leg injury. Like, yeah. the focus on people who were registered as hunters but could not otherwise get work for one reason or another. So, like, nobody's going to upset this gravy train. No. Not when they're making $9 million. Though I don't actually know what the unit of currency is. But... Yeah, it's true. I was a little unclear of how much it was. I figured it was still a lot. Uh, yeah, I'm trying yeah. to find her picture, but our little I teenager don't... hunter, um, I was trying to find her name. I'm not finding it, but I yeah. am suspecting that she's going to get nosy and curious. And oh, I was boy. waiting for her to walk in after to be like, what's happening? You know, because out of well, everybody in the group, 
because she's an inexperienced teenager, you know, because mm-hmm. she is the she wants the experience. They pointed out you don't have experience. And a lot of people, and especially when you're a teenager, you want to like prove yourself yeah. and, you know, do stupid things sometimes. And so I'm kind of just I was waiting the whole episode going, oh, no, is she going to walk in and it's going to be a problem? Like, I don't think they would do anything to her if she saw what happened. But I just was. Yeah. she's going to ruin the facade if she breaks through because everybody else is like they got their cards out yeah, yeah, yeah. just chilling taking a nap oh we're done all right you guys want to hang out for a few more hours yeah more money sure i think they're seeding her for now because mm. they've been seeding her from the get-go we saw her take her hunter test we saw her talking to younger sister because they're classmates potentially friends both question mark I and her commenting on like to connect those but yeah okay. so she's been a through line so far and she also mm. tested as an e-rank hunter but mm. it's still just your brother's a hunter right but he's the really weak one i bet i could do better than him eh. but the flip side of that is because i was talking about this with my roommate because again we watched this together yeah does she recognize him I don't think she does. Everyone keeps making comments about you look like a different person. You look like a different person. If she doesn't see the name, she might not have any idea that that's who she's dealing with. Yeah, I I, I agree. Uh, That is, that's kind of funny. I'm like, nope, did not connect. But it's the Superman thing. Having a hoodie. I'm like, who's this? (laughs) Yeah, but they also cut back to the scene of her going, is she cutting school again? And I'm like, look, if I could make nine million, whatever the currency is, in a day, like I don't think it's yeah, nine million yeah. dollars. I think there's probably a conversion rate in there somewhere. Yeah. But like it's still are a they lot, skipping school for that much oh, currency. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. Uh but yeah, I think she doesn't recognize him at all and how probably, everybody yeah. says, and it's just not even on her radar. The only time it's probably gonna cross her mind is she sees the name. First name, last name, together, something, or sees him with his sister. Though yeah. they don't seem to be out in public that often. Like, they just had that one exercise day that they did. But otherwise, he's kind of just coming and going. His sister's always like, yeah. hi. And she goes to school. Yeah. So, they're not probably yeah. going to happen that way. But I, uh, I did appreciate yeah. that we montaged this a little bit. That we had, oh, it yes. wasn't just one day of this. It's just, yes. this is how it's going. Yeah. Oh, and then we had our where did they I was like, what's it was his name? Our glasses dude with the memory of the, the nightmare. I yes. lo- for one, I loved how just completely abrupt this was. And yes. I loved the style change for the nightmare. Troy I love that A1 and Anaplex Jong-in. were just like, let's go. We're, we're animating a nightmare. It's going to be nuts. Let's just be experimental. Let's do something different. Let's play with the style. Like, yes. I loved it. Hit like a truck. Perfect. Oh, uh, that, that, yeah, that goes hand, that goes together with how they did the, uh, the fear effect, too. You yeah. Know? yeah. So, um, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but it's C-H-O-I and Choi Jong-ing. J O N G dash I N. Um, but I like how he's normally like so cool and like push the glasses up anime, like <laughs> yeah, glasses. But then in this, he's kind of a bit unhinged and had, you know, a nightmare. So I like seeing that. I mean, as, as we've talked about in previous episodes, everyone who was on that island mission either died or is real traumatized by it. And mm-hmm. it is considered a massive failure. Like, but there's a top that secret is something to go back, which is yeah. cool. Like, which oh. he's spearheading. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's the one putting stuff together to try and figure it out and like yep. end that dungeon break once and for all. Mm-hmm. But I do appreciate that we have this higher level plot happening. Yeah. And then also bringing back up the, the, I can never remember his name. My brain is just stuck on pencil me in for murder. The S rank younger brother of the Craigslist murder dungeon guy. <laughs> Wait, the oh, um, yeah, the, yeah, it was a related, bit of a conversation in the cold open because, like, everyone in that party died except for our protagonist and his buddy. And his younger brother, who was an S rank hunter, is gonna come for revenge. So it's like, yeah, my recommendation yes. is to just take your family and leave the country. like. Bruh, 
<laughs> Yikes. Yikes. I was thinking it was the, but I'm like, no, that's a different person. So Wu Jin Chol is the cool A-rank hunter and chairman. Yes. Yes. So not that guy, though. He's the chairman's assistant? Well, this He's under the says... chairman? No, because the chairman's like the older guy with the beard. Oh, there's a comma. It ah. says like an A-ring hunter. And because um, it's one of those things when you're trying to read information and not get spoilers. So I'm like. Yeah, yeah. No, I wouldn't worry about that. We're, we're yeah. bad at names and we're doing our best. So yeah. I, I do love that. Because Yeah, I did we're... suggest the, I, yeah, that get out of the country and get your whole mm -hmm. family out. It's okay. like, yikes. Yeah. Heck, and yikes. yikes. And so, our dude's like, fun. okay, whatever. But given the way all of this goes and the fact that we have two episodes left in the season, um, one of the bits that we get is that he's leveled up enough that he can now take a job change quest. Yes. So first of all, he's got a car, which is news to me. But I think if you're making that much money, you can afford to just buy a car outright. We didn't talk about the uh, approaching him. Oh, we'll get we'll get back to that. Oh, in a we're minute. getting there. Okay, I'm just going to like, talk wait. story yeah, structure yeah. for a minute because yes, we have yes. two more episodes, and I think my my prediction would be that our final two episodes of the season are going to be focused on whatever this job change quest is. Okay, like we are going to leave the Hell's Castle and the Elixir. We're putting a pin in that, and pencil me mm. in for murder. We're putting a pin in that, and the younger sister's friend is keeping an eye on things. We're putting a pin in that. Like we have all of these bits, and we're just kind of hanging them up for now, mm -hmm. because I do think we're going to get, you know, the next two episodes, the last two episodes of the season are going to be focused on whatever this quest is, and then we will spend possibly the latter half of the last episode possibly the last five minutes, possibly just a post credit scene, setting up whatever the next season's going to be. Whether that is the mission mm -hmm. to the island or pencil me in for murder coming back around or whatever. Like, yeah. I, I think we're not going to get any set up until the end of the season. So that's that's my prediction. Just, you know, yeah. given what that's I know right. about things like story structure. Would you say this show follows what you would expect story structure wise though? It's moving faster than I thought it would. Mm -hmm. There are arcs that I thought would take more time where they're just mm -hmm. like one episode done, two episodes done. Like, mm -hmm. I, but then again, I also haven't read the manhwa, so I don't know what to expect. It's yeah. possible that the manhwa also moves at this speed. It's mm -hmm. not in my yeah, opinion, the question is, it's are not they, um, detrimental. It's not yeah. breakneck. Because I've seen shows, anime, et cetera, boom, where the boom, pace boom. is just yeah. to the to the detriment of the story. And I don't mm. think that's the case here. No. But we'll see. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, let's chat about our... The our, scout. Uh, the scout. <laughs> ah! Like, oh I can't blame him for having a little pattern recognition and going, this E-rank hunter has survived all of these crazy things. I need to scout him. He's probably had a reawakening. Like I cannot blame a guy for yeah. seeing an opportunity and jumping on it. Like before that, we got what okay. was, I thought he was going to be some kind of journalist who was digging this up and was like putting these pieces together. and was going to do a news story on it. And you know, like why would somebody care? You know, what kind of yeah. person would have it? So I thought the journalist, but then it's like, Oh, he's, he's, you know, finding people that would be good to recruit. And I just love yeah. the, yeah, you want to join our team and we're so cool. And when you're the head Ooh. or one of the bigger recruiters for one of the five big guilds, like, yeah, you have a little weight you can throw around. Yeah. But man, did this guy go in half cocked. Yeah, Genu's <laughs> like, wow. uh, yeah, no, and don't come back again. Oh, and the invisibility, yeah. his uh, assassin mode and invisibility and yeah. a little slice. It's like, oh, shit. Yeah, that was really good. I thought it was very exciting because it's just a conversation, but how they do that was just very, oh, okay, what's happening? This is exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And I think to me, this particular display, hmm. on the one hand, you do make a threat display to get someone off of your back because he mm -hmm. really doesn't want people tracking him down. He's He's got a good thing going here far as he knows. Mm -hmm. And he does not want this information getting out. He doesn't want people to know about him. So on the one hand, there's the threat display. On the other hand, I think we're still dealing with 
someone who is not used to this power is not used to the world and the responsibilities that go along with it. Oh, yeah. Like he's used to be in an E rank. So mm -hmm. all of this B rank, A, A rank, and let's be real, by the time Pencil Me In for Murder comes around, he's going to be S rank adjacent so that we can have a hoedown, showdown, throwdown instead of a slaughter. Mm -hmm. uh, or possibly a slaughter going the opposite yeah. direction. Who knows? Yeah. I, I have... I have a conspiracy board for what I think the larger beats are going to be given the setup we have up we have mm. now. But this I think speaks to his inexperience mm. in things like people having their eyes on him being scouted, all of that fun stuff. Because now that he's shown off everything he can do and he's made it very clear that like monetarily you cannot match what I have and then just texted the guy like you make a big threat display and you hope that it will scare them off and it scares off some people, but not unlike our protagonist, this guy is also learning all the wrong lessons. So what he took from this is this guy is very smart, relatively powerful. And now I have his phone number. So I'm just sitting here going, <laughs> you bought a car, but you didn't buy a burner phone. My dude, he might've, we don't know. He's new to but this. Yeah. I, he's new to this. And I, I read this as his inexperience is very much showing here. Sure. So well, cause he hasn't had to deal with people in this way. And like the politics of how these groups work and the hierarchy and he's been, you know, overlooked. He doesn't exist yeah. for most people. So yeah, absolutely. He's just like, sure. I don't know what's happening, but he's like, making he's, his way. he's been in the door as far as hunter culture goes, but mm -hmm. he's also been seated at basically the kids' table this whole time. Yes. So you know what's going on in the room, but you're not a part of yeah. it. And now he is very much a part of it and trying to act like that's not the case or at least keep this under wraps. Yeah. So he has no idea what he's doing here. No. Like, I think what we watched here was a very <laughs> cool, nice little power display and a litany of mistakes. So we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. I don't think this is going to be under wraps for too much longer. Uh, anything else speaking. on this one? Because then I had to try. I feel real bad for the assistant. <laughs> Just oh, yeah. Parked outside like this poor guy. This is his night. Um, yeah. And in terms of just larger plot threads, larger conspiracy board stuff, I think that by the time his upward arc becomes public becomes more known to the guilds he mm -hmm. will be at a point where he will be sent on this mission to clear out the island because yes. he will be strong enough to handle it or at least make yep. a dent in things like i feel like that's kind of an easy point a to point b thing to mm -hmm. make i'm still kind of yeah, yeah i'm still kind of wondering about pencil me in for murder up in here mm -hmm. and i'm wondering if his like, yeah, I'll go on this island jaunt, whatever. And then I borrow your S rank hunters for this dungeon clear for his yeah. elixir of life to yeah. get his mom up and running again. Because that to me feels like the very long game mm. is this castle, this elixir of life, this all of this. It feels like everything else is going to need to slot into place before that happens. Could be wrong. Makes Could be sense. reading this incorrectly, but uh, that's mm. kind of what I'm thinking right now with the yeah, pieces I, like I have. That would go either way in terms of the, that is a long goal and that's like towards the end is mom is better, yeah. but it could be a short term thing. And, you know, then that adds a new conflict that she is better and then he's still dealing with what he's going yeah. through. So just I feel that they, yeah, mom having, yeah, just mom having soap opera sleeping disease it has been his main character motivation yeah. to be a hunter. And I feel like taking that motivation away early would be weird. And mm. I think this is where we segue into delicious in dungeon because weird. they just did that. <laughs> uh, here we go. But real before that, Giga Derek goes, people learning the wrong lessons all episode. People yeah. learning the wrong lessons all series. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just, uh, gonna, just that's that's it. That's the show. People speaking, learning the wrong lessons. Speaking of weird and failures, in a way, uh, yeah, this was an episode. <laughs> it's going on. So, so Katie again, sent me like this meme 
of oh, how yeah. the show breaks down of like, okay, cool. This is so light and cute. Wait, what the fuck? And then we have, we, it was broken <laughs> down into four categories. It was broken down into, oh, a cute anime about cooking in a dungeon and slice of life at like the top eight. And then mm -hmm. the eighth under it was what? And then most of it was what the fuck? And then the last eighth is like, oh, it's about this and this and this. And here's the themes. And here's the, <laughs> I'm just sitting yep. here going. I appreciate all of our manga readers on Tumblr who, I've gotten some weird out of context spoilers, but nothing I truly mm. understand at this point. So props mm. to everyone. Basically going, congratulations, anime onlys. You have entered the what zone. <laughs> I'm like, okay. All right. Yeah. Cause oh. uh, <laughs> let's just jump to our major what of, uh, oh, poor Yorick. I knew him well. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good old Murray. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I need to bring up because I did have mm. and I don't know if they're in here they did ask me to ping them for the show uh, one of my lovely discord humans whom I adore is a manga reader for this and so I did ping them and go hey those last two shots were those adaptations of the manga panels or was that trigger just making some amazing storyboarding decisions mm. turns out that the framing the camera from the inside of the skull was a trigger decision. So oh. whoever did the storyboarding at Studio Trigger for that scene, hats off to you. You deserve a raise and a vacation. Because, damn, that was amazing. Like, Were you just surprised striking. that this is what they got? They found the bones? A little bit. Because it really is like, ah, Russ is here. Yep, 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 yep. Thank you for checking that for me. And thank you for keeping things spoiler free. I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, my God. It, it tracks with all of the, it's weird that the dragon is doing this. This is odd behavior for them. Why are they up here? What are they doing? It tracks with, there is something off about this dragon. And we don't know what. Mm -hmm, so it mm -hmm. makes sense that what they expected in terms of digestion rate, et cetera, also doesn't track. Yeah. But also, what I was saying in solo leveling about removing someone's entire character motivation within 10 episodes. Here we are in episode 11. And it's looking like Fallon's not coming back. So I doubt that's the case. We've laid way too much groundwork for that. But also, what? <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, RS yeah, says, I've yeah, been yeah. so excited for this episode to get here. Well, my... This is what we've been talking about in terms uh. of don't <laughs> spoil us. Oh, <laughs> love you, dude. In terms of manga and manhwa readers watching us talk about solo leveling and dungeon meshi and just getting to go <laughs> while we discuss things. Like, yeah, yeah, welcome to the what so It's zone. just going to yep. get weirder. Awesome. Love it. Uh, well, the thing I kind of wondered, which it's within the realm of this show and the things we've already experienced of one, the souls attached to the body, how far gone can a body be and be brought back? Cause we've, we've seen people who've died be brought back. So like, if you have the bones, do you need all of them kind of a thing to bring somebody back? Or if you did, would it form? But if you had things missing, it would be problematic. Because I feel like I've seen that on things, too. Like in a story where they collect the bones, put it together. And if they have anything missing, it becomes a problem. Uh, like maybe Yeah, we somebody... call it Full Metal Alchemist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like I've seen it in other things, too. Um, you know, they're getting ready, laid out and everything. Um, yeah. But, you know, it, I'm curious with this world what are our parameters of what's allowed? Because so far, I, I, I'm i like, with what we've seen, I'm like, well, this, that doesn't necessarily mean it's done. You know, like the quest isn't over, but how much of, they, of her do they need to take back to somewhere to be like, and revived? The point that they made mm -hmm. way at the beginning in episode one, Russ, I swear to God, I... <laughs> just dangling in front of us it is we told you to do it and here you are because you know that that's the thing of like how we love the world building in general and then in the show and they've done a good job of like here are situations that have happened 
So it's a if and then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The point they made at the beginning in episode one is that you do need a body for a revival. And then following on with that, when we got the introduction of here is the weird curse that's laid on the dungeon, it tethers the soul to the body. So a revival spell is essentially just healing the fatal wound. And once you heal it, the soul will come back. Mm -hmm. There isn't really a body, a functional body to come back to here. True. Yes, the world building's goddamn amazing. There isn't really a body here. There's dem bones, dem bones, dem dry bones. So, or probably soggy bones at this point, given where they've been kept. So that kind of precludes that whole, as long as we can get them back with minimal damage, we can revive them idea. Mm. There's no connective tissue. There's no organs. There's no nothing. There's a skull and a stick. So yikes. But then we also have, if you die, it tethers your soul. Mm -hmm. And we had a nice little flashback this episode with Lyos and Fallon. And Lyos, well, of course... flashback that blends into present. Lyos being very, very obsessed with monsters from a young age, yes. because of course he is. Of course. <laughs> that hyperfixation does not fade, friends. No. And Fallon knowing how to deal with them, having a gift for this magic, and then also mm -hmm. making the point of, take the ring off. The ring is binding the soul here. So we have the reminder of there's a lot of soul binding here. It is entirely possible that Fallon's soul is still bound to the bones because they are in this dungeon, because that's what happens when you die in this dungeon. Like, that... Boy, that opens up some questions. Like, I'm sure we will get more next week we'll get the next step forward we'll figure something out it is a 24 episode season so we're not even halfway yet so I'm like holy if they have good ghosties because so far they've been like more on the mindless side they don't seem to have a personality like you would almost categorize the ghosts that we've seen like zombies it's just like and they go at things you know there's not really you wouldn't have a conversation with them. You wouldn't try to understand what's wrong the same way. Uh, though with with Lau the flashback, Lau flashback one was flashback. communicating. That one did, but within this dungeon, we haven't seen any yet that are as talkative. Yeah, uh, they don't have the communication skills. So my then my other question would be: Is if Fallon's a ghost, can she hang out with them? And they like bring her bones around and carry them around with them for whatever the rest <laughs> of their quest is. <laughs> she gave him the I'm okay. And I kind of th thought he's going to be so stubborn. He's going to like collect everything and be like, well, you're going to still hang out with us. And then she'll be a ghost. But maybe she'll be a different kind of ghost. So oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm fully expecting some form of reassembly going on here. I like, think I am expecting. Try some shit yes they are gonna <laughs> try and i'm curious what those results yeah. will be because we also don't know like we're learning the rules of the world but we don't know enough about yeah. the rules of the world to be able to say what is possible with this yeah. system of magic and what is not like can you make a homunculus and bind a soul to it if you have mm -hmm. If the soul's already bound to the bones that you're using for the framework, is a that body? a thing? Yeah. yeah. Can you can you find another dead body and shove her in there? Like how or does some this kind work? of magical body hybrid something? Yeah. Like yeah. can we use what we have and then have to mix in other things and really do the alchemy of it? Artifact. Let's yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh this up. Let's put yeah. her in a soul. <laughs> Let's put her in a in a golden <laughs> chain. It'll be great. Uh, uh, do not do Yu-Gi-Oh magic with this. There's way too many dead people in there. Uh, <laughs> so for those of you who never got past the first season or two of Yu-Gi-Oh, like, what? Yeah, no, it's it's turbo fucked. It's kind of amazing. Kazuki Takahashi wanted to make a horror manga, and then the card game got big. Anyway, oh, yeah. anyway, that's that's a different hyperfixation. Anyway. I don't have answers for this. And I oh, kind no. of love yeah. that. Yeah. Like, I'm sure we will get them. Again, we are 11 episodes into a 24 episode season of what halfway. I understand is a Almost. 98 yeah. chapter manga. So mm. we got some time. Yes. So I'm very, very curious as to what in the blue hell we're doing from this point forward. Yeah. 
Because just from uh, what I've seen on Tumblr, there's characters we have. Yes, thanks. <laughs> See, this is the kind of this like not shit. spoilers, but letting us know we are totally good with. If we have a where we do directly pose a question of, will we find this out? This is acceptable. Here's a great example of that. <laughs> or if we, we have done it on occasion where we're like, hey, will we da 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 da? And then it's like, that, that's where it's allowed. Or like asking yeah. chat to do our Google searches for us. Like, that is was this character well. this? I don't remember. Like, someone please look that up for me. I'm losing I, my mind. Yeah. I think now, anyway. just pondering, I am curious what our team will want to do next. Because I... Grieve. Our main, <laughs> you know, like, half of the team is, well, we did the quest. We're done. We, we got you to this point. Mm -hmm. uh, got the dragon meat. But uh, which they said she still wants yet. to eat that dragon. That's true. We have not had the dragon meat. We don't know what, how good this is yet. And Chill Truck got them there. Mm -hmm. But the other half is like, no, it's not over. So the question is like, how can they keep the other two around? That's the other kind of question. Like they did the main part of it. Um, I mean, <laughs> for starters, I sincerely did. <laughs> <laughs> RS says, I love being ominous and vague, so this is perfect for me, actually. All right, Sharing a Discord server with this lovely human? Yeah, I do. Uh, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Uh, being ominous and vague is very, very fun in closure enrichment, honestly. Uh, uh, yep. For one, I don't think Senshi and or Chilchuk are just going to fuck off in the middle of the no, dungeon. I don't think that so is either. extremely no. dangerous. That too. Senshi is now without a weapon, and Chilchuk huh? is... Yes. Chilchuk is very clear that he's not a fighter, so he's yep. not about to leave and then, mm -hmm. you know, get waxed this far down where the corpse yep. collectors may or may not ever come. Yes. So, yeah, I I think we are sticking with this party for a while. I don't know. Oh, I don't what think they're going to bounce. Gonna it's just no. what what will be the you should stick around with us motivator or the yeah like well I have nothing better to do or it's yeah. safer to stay with you or will it be a little more okay, I care about hanging out with you guys now, you know. I wouldn't be surprised if Senshi stays with the party for funsies and possibly to get another axe, because yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if there's a bit in the ending. We have all of these, you know, scenes, and one mm -hmm. of them is a green dragon carcass being hauled out of a hole in the dungeon. So I'm wondering if dragon parts are worth money. Hmm, if it's worth it to yeah. take the horns, the teeth, the claws, etc., yeah. do your full Dungeons and Dragons takedown of the creature and bring as much of it as you can topside to sell it. And sure. if that will be enough money to get weapons and hire people and yeah. all that fun. So who knows? Who knows? I, I think I think that's like episode 15 or 16 questions. I'm still hmm. kind of staring at 12 and going. So who knows? Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Senshi eat that dragon. Yes. That is just going to be fun. Um, oh, actually we still have characters it. we haven't met. Well, yeah, he stuck with them because no, no. he wants to eat um, a dragon. How how they had to carve a tunnel into the mm -hmm, dragon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. With their little knife. And it's like, it's just a literal tunnel into there. So A mithril knife. Show. And just yeah. the, don't show that to Namari. She would have killed me. I'm like, yeah. I think you're right. You're right. You should say it. She would have done a murder. Uh, I do love just that bit carving the tunnel with it's dark. Should we light a lantern? No flames. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, this yeah. is a thing that has <laughs> flames. <laughs> like just that little bit of no, 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 no. RSS. Yeah. I love that. He just has that. Yeah. Of course he does. Yeah, the, I, I immediately thought that too with the fire. I'm like, no, the thing is the combust. No. <laughs> I do want to talk about the fight itself. Oh, yeah. I do yeah. want to talk about how the plan went immediately to hell. Of course. But, and I do, I like that Chilchuck knows that Kensuke exists now. I like that Chilchuck is well aware that there is something in that sword that Laos has been keeping from yes. people and that it damn near got everyone killed yep. because of that prey reflex to run. Yep. Like that is a whole ass problem in situations like this. Cause mm -hmm. that honestly probably could have worked if Kensuke hadn't been like, I don't want to die today and try yeah. to leave. <laughs> so that, 
that is an actual problem that wound up making things worse than they needed to be. I'm glad that finally came up too, because we were wondering yeah. how long it would be kept from a secret from the group. And yeah, speak of secrets in the group, that is a big one of, uh, yeah, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. Yeah, like it's fine if it's just your little pet, whatever, but it nearly got us all killed. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. no. And it seems to, at this point, just be a secret between Chilchuck and Lyos. And it makes me wonder if mm. Chilchuck is going to keep it a secret when mm. addressing Lyos. Mm. Again, I think that's another one that's like, oh, wait, 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 we're Dungeon Meshy. This side. <laughs> keep the cork board separate. <laughs> I also uh, think the I Demon did. Slayer one is over here. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's one where it's, that's a conversation that's going to be tabled until they figure out the Fallon situation. Mm -hmm. Because the Fallon situation is a lot. Mm -hmm. It's just so much. And that's the sort of thing where you don't put salt in that wound. Like, mm -hmm. Chilchuck will probably wait to address that until the larger problem at the table is figured yeah. out. Uh, I like the Lyos leg maneuver to yeah. hang upside down. I was... Painful. But good idea. Like, I, I appreciate that our group often has really good ideas. They may not work quite right. But you're like, well, that's, that's not the worst idea. <laughs> like, okay, yeah. that, that is a plan. And the building collapse of, yeah, that was not enough. Yeah. And the, you know, this different things they try to do. But uh, apparently they needed more protection for their heads as well. <laughs> a lot of yeah. head injuries. Again, they... they very much made the point about Marcel's abjuration magic and how like her her support magic is not as good as her offensive magic she mm -hmm. is a red mage their white mage is dead that's yeah. a problem so uh, yeah yeah but it was still useful but it, it's still it, very useful yeah. and well, also yeah. i did love her bit with the healing and just being like, yeah, when you heal a big wound very quickly, you get healing pains from it. But, like, that's how it works. That is that is the indicator that things are working. You will live. And then she like just, I'll heal it myself. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> and the SFX being, like, written out in blood and, like, yeah. The SFX being very crunchy when they appeared on screen was really funny to me. And it was kind of cool, actually, how Lyos, you, he had the scar on the leg, you know, mm -hmm. so it is a magic that doesn't necessarily erase what happened, yeah. but it repairs. So I yeah. thought that was pretty cool to have that touch. Yeah, yeah. just I love that. I love that it's a little more of the rules around magic. Mm -hmm. I love that we yes. got to see the writing almost like a gunpowder trail of Marcel's yeah. spells where she's I able like to be out writing. of the line of fire and yes. just start it off. And it's like a fuse to set off the spell. I love that so much. That's so interesting to me. Just as world building. Yeah. No, I, I like that as a technique and how it, it's one of those, it's fantasy, but a lot of things kind of fit for real world where we yeah. go, yeah, that tracks. Okay, yeah. I follow along, which kind of makes it more relatable in terms instead of something so outrageous that you sit there going, I don't yeah. get it, you know. There's so. there's fantasy where you just kind of go, yeah, it's fantasy. You know, you roll with it. And there's fantasy where they show you the practicalities of the systems that they're working with. Mm -hmm. So it's still very much, yeah, this is fantasy, but it's also, oh, it's got rules. Oh, look at the setup. Oh, mm -hmm. it's 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 a little crunchier. It's a little more mechanical. It's very like fun. The I like healing. it. Crunchier. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Like yikes, but also yeah. Very funny. Very glad that was played for laughs because that could have been like, yeah. Well, another thing about it that's nice is it uh, not diminishes it, but it makes it you know you can't be flippant about getting repaired. You yeah. know, it is the well, it's still gonna hurt, but we can fix it. But it's not just say, oh no, big deal thing. So I kind of like that yeah. too. That there's the stakes of it's gonna hurt, but we we can yeah. fix it. But just get ready. Yeah, the dungeon yeah. is a revolving door of death, but you can still yes. perma-die. There is healing magic, but injuries can still be bad or debilitating yeah. or fatal. Like, it's it's easier to bring people back. It's easier to patch people up. But that doesn't mean that there are not 
consequences Mm -hmm. and it made Mm -hmm. the consequences very clear, which is again, world building is so good in this show. Yes. But yeah, very, very fun. Loved, loved Lyos's plan, loved the evolutions of Lyos's plans, Mm -hmm. how it's Mm -hmm. not just, well, the first one didn't work. We got to go, or this is a problem. It's, you can see how this group worked together for so long. You can see that he understands what his companions are capable of mm-hmm. and that he is capable of seeing these new developments. Here's a knife. We can use it like this. This didn't work out. We're going to try this instead. Like that he is able to look at all of these complications, look at things evolving and go, here's the new plan. Okay. That's not working out. Here's the new one. And that, everyone else in the group just trusts yeah. him here's the plan okay makes sense because like, he had knows this where she's she had her moment of wait what the fuck do i do and then all right well this is what comes to my mind which is what he essentially predicted and or had the idea of she'll do something it's gonna work and yeah. the bumping into each other was funny and it's like no yeah. who do you we're gonna make it work so i, I like their can do attitude essentially yeah, I, I like his plans. I like that he can improvise. Mm-hmm. I also like that he's also just still a dingus sometimes. Like, yes, the cooking pan distributes heat evenly. Like, the fact that no one had thought to do potholders, to wrap his hands, to do, like, anything to put a layer no. of protection between yes. him and the pan. Because since she had the lid and the lid was wrapped... Yep. Yes, there is a reason he's a leader. R.S. Mm-hmm. Agree. Mm-hmm. Yep. He is a good leader. He knows what people's strengths are and trusts them and is able to inspire them to just do what they would not naturally be inclined yeah. to do. And that works. And yep. yes, I agree. Why didn't they have some kind of thing for the pot? <laughs> ah, I appreciate hey, that. Like, okay. he's a leader, but he's also still a person. They're coming up with this yes. on the fly. They're doing their best. Yes. He's not going to be able to do every single eventuality ever like he's yeah. working with what he's got yeah he has a heart of gold he's also another golden retriever yeah oh yeah yes. oh yes. yeah it's very fun yeah so yeah right. just rolling into this next episode like all right we are in the what zone gonna be really fun when we hit the full what the fuck zone don't know yeah. how soon that's gonna happen <laughs> but uh I we I feel like we should also link that post on our Twitter just so yeah. people can see like this is the roadmap we were handed Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. So yeah. speaking of oh, looking over the chat, um, he's not Batman. Yeah. No. Like, and yeah. it's uh, fun to watch Batman type characters. It's fun to watch the. Yeah, I yeah. saw what you're doing, and I have this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's if if you're in it to watch L and Light go nuts and like yeah. four dimensional chess each other, cool. But I like when we don't expect our prote- all of our protagonists to be able to do that. I like when it's like, yes, perfect. this is yeah. their strength, but they're still yep. human. They're going to miss things. They're going to make mistakes. It's going to cause problems. It's organic to what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And I like that. I like that Senshi is intelligent about the things he's good with. He's very smart about this dungeon and cooking monsters, but he's also arrogant in his own experience. No, I've mm-hmm. made friends with this Kelpie. It won't try to eat me. No, I hate magic. We shouldn't use it for anything. He's more of a Dick Grayson at community college. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have the ass? Uh, <laughs> what's Dick Grayson known for? A number of things, but also. All right. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. I love that we have well-rounded characters here. I love yes. that we have people and that they're not immaculate and that they're more than just their skill set like it makes it more believable and it makes it so much more fun to watch and that it's not just like well senshi's right and magic is bad well marcel's right and magic should be used for everything there's context to these arguments there's Mm -hmm. flavor there's no Mm -hmm. right or wrong there's just two differing opinions like i love it and that's so hard to do in a story yes because they're likable you know you're not a we were annoyed with Marcel at the beginning a little bit, and I'm glad Who's we. They... At the beginning, come on, uh, we, me, and some of the people in the chat. Um, but <laughs> that character, say, grew. you got a mouse in your pocket, yeah. you got a Yu-Gi-Oh necklace. What do you got? Who's we? Uh, it's the royal we. Uh, okay, all right. But we'll I like these characters it. have developed. 
So, mm -hmm. yes. Anyway. All right. So some other things you should be checking out. So that's books, movies, games, whatever we've been watching, YouTube channels. Um, I, I've kind of been, I'm like, look at my little planner. I'm like, what have I been watching? Uh, a lot of the same, but I'm still liking, still loving Abbott Elementary. It is a delightful light watch if you want something funny and a lot of heart actually too as it goes on and just adorable halo is still cool and i started um oh yeah sweet home almost done with season two so far i'm not loving season two the way i really like season one but it's more just because we've expanded into so many other things and the main one of the main characters just kind of fizzled out their involvement and it's kind of one of those did we write them out because the actor wasn't available or is this you know it almost feels like that but still a cool show if you're watching any of those let me know and then the other one i did start and i'm not sure how i feel about it yet is i did start the bear i'm a couple episodes in it's a very noisy show there's lots of talking and over talking but as someone who's worked in film too i really I think that's kind of exciting to watch in terms of how everybody has to be on and really in their scene because it's it's a busy kitchen so it's people talking and like it's very alive so i do like that but it is one of those like there's a lot happening this is <laughs> so I'll, I'll i will report back but two episodes in i'm curious enough to watch some more but uh yeah let me know if you've watched any of those shows and let us know what else you're watching katie what about you yeah, I haven't watched The Bear, but I have worked in restaurants before. And mm. like the kitchen being batshit insane tracks. I've right. heard that The Bear is it. very accurate when it comes mm. to restaurant depictions, as opposed to some of the more romanticized depictions mm -hmm. of back of house, which, yeah, no, back of house yes. is nuts. Untitled and on purposes. I really enjoy The Bear, but yes, lots of talking and yelling. And nothing is wrong with that, but it's just one of those. <laughs> it's a lot. So Yeah. You, you, you yeah. notice when there's crosstalk in your media because that's something yeah. that's there on purpose because otherwise, you know, you want clarity of dialogue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you can hear her. My cat's here. Yes. Complaining had, about her dinner again. I had my dog barking. Speaking of crosstalk with our pet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> her pets yeah. are like, hey, we're here too. Yeah. You're yeah. not going to get to see her because she's not a jump up on my lap sort of cat. And I'm not going to try to pick her up because oh, 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 we're not knocking the screen over. Uh, I have also been watching more of the same, still watching Master Chef Junior, still watching Next Level Chef, which I love, still going through the episodes of Cutthroat Kitchen that I haven't yet seen and running out of those very quickly. Uh, yeah, if you want just a completely insane cooking show and not have to worry about keeping track of contestants through a seasonal arc, Cutthroat Kitchen is very fun in a very buckwild sort of way. So highly recommended. So yeah, basically living on Hulu and... On YouTube, been watching a lot more Jacksepticeye. He is posting Bloodborne and Souls games, like six and eight hour videos where he just sits down and does a full playthrough, which is a wild thing to watch, but very fun. Mm -hmm. 10 Minute Power Hour is back, which I adore. OWCS is here and still a little weird because it's not Overwatch League. It's different competitive Overwatch and some of the same faces and a lot of new ones, but it's it's a good time so yeah still just all of the same stuff because life is very busy and very weird right now <laughs> fair yeah and still watching if you want to put another anime in your docket shangri-la frontier is amazing full stop i it's just banger after banger after banger with this show highly recommended it's so much fun you do have to watch the sub though because the dub is quality, but because it's a video game anime, there's a lot of on-screen text that the sub will give you, and the dub does not. Mm. Just does not bother translating anything mm. on screen. It's yeah. terrible. So the dub actors do a phenomenal job, but if you want the actual full context of everything going on, you have to watch the sub for Shangri-La Frontier. Yeah. But yeah, highly recommended. This show brings me so much joy. Just do it. Nice. Uh, looking back over in the chat, Rab did chime in about the bear. So like MASH, but more swearing. Yeah, I, I, I haven't, it's been a minute, but I remember watching that show. And that also has a lot of like, a lot going on. 
Uh, that's a classic that I'm like, nope, still good. I remember watching some episodes like while on vacation. It was on the on TV, and I was like, nope, still good. Always yeah. nice to see when movies and shows hold up years later, still hold up and are entertaining. All right, so thank you everybody who is joining us in the live chat. Thank you so much for chiming in. But if you're a quiet observer, totally cool too. And if you're watching us later, comment down below. We love you as well. And let's get into where people can find us online. So first, go check out NTA Tim P. And then, yes. Yeah, you can follow me all over the social medias as well as on YouTube and Twitch at Kiaxe. That is K-I-A-X-E-T. I am also a co-host on Silver Screams on YouTube, which is a horror-themed channel. So if you really just want to see me jump out of my skin, trailer reactions on that channel, baby. We, uh, I have a hell of a startle reflex, and some trailers are very, very good at bringing it out. Nice. And you all can find me online at Carrie D. Lane. That's K-A-R-I-D-L-A-N-E. Uh, across all social media and platforms here on the fanversation channel definitely check out we have lots of great videos and content that have been added recently and some stuff probably coming up soon and if you're new here there's a voice actor playlist as well and some other specific anime for or if you're into film we have other film playlists so check those out and then on my pages, I haven't post, I posted on my stories and I haven't made the video just yet, but I got to go to a holy event and it's the Indian festival where they have the colored powder and everything. Uh, there's a lot more to it, than, but that's the easy way that most people go. Oh yes, that. Uh, it was amazing and so much fun. It was by Holy Hype LA and it was, they had entertainment, they had dancing, like music and just activities, which I thought was really great to have just so many different things to do at an event. Uh, I've been to other ones before where, you know, they're, they're still also a great time, but this one was great because I hadn't been to the, that uh, company's version of their event. And so I was like, this is great. So I had a really good time. So stay tuned for fun pictures and videos of that with color all over. And uh, I did like a get ready with me. <laughs> <laughs> it was to get ready with me before and then you get to see the after and so that's pretty fun so yeah wait follow up for that and yeah stay tuned here on this channel and we'll be back to our regular programming for monday uh and yep. thanks for blend uh going with us of uh, sometimes it shifts a little bit but we want to bring you all the stuff so it's here on this channel so you make sure you're subscribed and mm -hmm. give the video a thumbs up so then you know when things are happening and thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next yeah. time. Bye. Bye.